Hello, Internet. Hewlett here on a dark, moody evening in the fan cave here. I have um, done my burn and learn a little earlier, but I got called up to dinner as soon as it was, as, as soon as I had finished on the torture device. So we had movies and dinners in between, so I thought I'd come down and just record this now before I cozy up in my bed and watch a really cool, scary movie of some sort. Um, so uh, this is a burn and learn. For those of you who don't know, it's my bit to stay alive and fit long enough to raise my amazing son, who is currently being raised by Netflix upstairs watching Sword Art Online, and my beautiful, brilliant wife, Jane, who I never see because she's working so damn hard. Um, uh, I, yeah, I hate exercise. It's boring as all hell, and uh, I like to learn something while I'm doing it, then I like to share what I've learned with you in the sweatiest way possible. Um, and I almost forgot today. I just, I was gonna let it go and think, I thought, oh, I'll just do like a video tomorrow. But I thought, I don't know, this thing about, I want the credit. I want the credit for doing the work. So. At a nice long session, I've discovered it is impossible to stop exercising no, much, no matter how much you hate exercise. It is impossible to stop exercising when a total eclipse of the heart is playing on your music uh, selection. So uh, I have to thank uh, <laughs> YouTube Music for that. Um, added an extra like three minutes to my, uh, to my workout. Um, so the torture device is, is silent. Uh, the house is not because Sword Art Online, the um, anime show, is on. And um, I, uh, yeah, the learn part of my run-learn, I guess I should talk about that. Uh, I obviously continuing with my surveillance capitalism, um, which will end at some point, I'm sure. I just keep reading and reading and reading. Uh, it is uh, into this interesting part about Pokemon Go. So Pokemon Go as not just as innocent game um, with uh, obvious potential advertising, you know, revenue aspects to it. They said they weren't going to put advertising in the game. Uh, they were going to make money by microtransactions. Now, what they meant by micro microtransactions, or what everyone thought they meant by microtransactions, was, you know, buying in-game kit stuff, like, you know, uh, different things to help you out play the game, um, as many of us have done. Not me, of course, because, you know, I'm, I'm a purist. Um, but uh, it, the microtransactions were also with people and businesses uh, that could herd people towards their various different um, locations using this stuff. So I thought that was really fascinating. I mean, I, I assumed that's what was happening. I wondered at first because every single church that I ever saw had some kind of a Pokemon stop on it when I first started. And I wondered if there was some kind of an agreement they had with either God or, or the church itself. Um, because everywhere I went, if there was a, you know, it just, it just never failed. There was, you didn't miss a church that wasn't a, um, there wasn't a Pokestop for a while there. I don't know if that's still the case. I haven't played for ages. Um, but they were saying that what's happening here is not so much um, just gathering information now. It is about behavioral modification. And that is a scary, scary term. It is a term that we faced in the 60s and the 70s um, uh, as we sort of, we, we feared these in wartime, you know, the, the prisoners of war being being captured and, and tortured and, and brainwashed, as the term would be. And there was a number of great movies that came out about this kind of thing. You know, spot people who'd been brainwashed and turned into spies. And it was very nice sort of 70s paranoia stuff. Um, and they're saying just how different we are today because the, the whole idea of behavioral modification now is happening on a regular basis with these, with these um, technologies, with these, with these um, uh, sort of social media type um, uh, projects like Pokemon Go. Um, and uh, I mean, even to some extent, you know, like Instagram or YouTube, all that kind of stuff, I mean, you're, you're, you know, you get enough people doing videos in locations and then all of a sudden you got a lot more people going to visit them because of that, because, you know, there's been YouTubers there before. Um, if you want to be really conspiratorial, like, you know, really get into the conspiracy theory side of stuff, it's, it's trying to herd people to do exactly what you want them to do. And she goes on to say that her concern, the author, is that this calls into question the very nature of free will, <laughs> which is, boy, she's getting, she's getting hot and heavy on this one here. Um, and, and I, this, and but this apartment that really got me kind of, you know, I felt the knife digging in, the little knife of fear down my spine. I don't know what that means. Um, and she talks about the idea that, you know, that we, if we are herded and maneuvered and modified to do what we're, what we're told to do, we lose the power to make our own choices. And the more that things restrict those choices, um, the more dangerous it is. Um, and especially now when we used to fear, you know, evil government regimes, uh, doing this kind of stuff, we've now quite sort of happily handed it over to corporations and given corporations the ability to become, in a way, human entities without any of the requirements of being human. 
Um, she talks about an example of a of a bank that was foreclosing on a some kind of a loan on a on a car and uh, foreclosing is that the term I guess. So they sent a repo man to go and get this car, and the guy arrived to take the car and realized that it was a little old couple who was basically spending all their money on their medication, um, having to choose between their medication and their car payments. So he called the bank and said, look, this is the case. They said, well, you know, this is nothing we can do. We just, you got to take the car. He said, well, what if, you know, like, what if I pay for the car? And um, how this sort of act of kindness led to a sort of an outpouring of support from people around the world and money was sent and the car payments were, the car was bought and detailed and there was, and, and a, and a Thanksgiving turkey was bought and there was extra money for this, this couple. But and her point was that doesn't exist in a society that is entirely dependent on automatic checks and balances. So in nowadays, or in future, near future anyways, that car will automatically be, dis be disabled by an AI that realizes the payments haven't been made and, um, and a car is dispatched to go and pick it up um, from whatever its last known location was type thing. So there would have been no interaction, there would have been no communication between the people you are either bad or good in the eyes of a computer. Um, an interesting point. Uh, yeah, and, and one that I'm not sure we've solved yet. I wonder if perhaps it's just a matter of working out the kinks and this stuff will work. But um, I also wonder if there's many things that we would have uh, we would have relied on people for that we no longer rely on people for. I mean, the one that leads to mind, strangely, is like traffic lights. I mean, uh, you know, that would used to all have to be done by a live policeman. Um, and then it was automated. And I'm sure there are people who went like, oh, come on, an automated system? That can't possibly know what's going on. And that can't see a car hurtling towards you and at great speed and know that it's going to let you through and stuff. You know, maybe we're just not advanced enough. Maybe that once the technology catches up and we catch up with the idea, maybe it can do these things for us and be able to, to, to make certain judgment calls. Um, just, again, this book is just extraordinary because it really brings up some amazing things. She talks about us and our behavior and our behavior as the natural resources for, um, for um, uh, uh, surveillance capitalism. And, um, yeah, I, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm blown away by it. Um, a couple other fun sort of updates. I have to say thank you to everybody for this, for the Steam um, Stargate support stuff. I mean, you guys have a lot of great ideas um, I have, uh, I'm in the process of potentially securing a space, uh, for Tech Terrors to be held in, kind of a maker space that I will, I will attempt to, uh, kit out with what we need and, um, um, and invite the, uh, the kids to come and, uh, and work there. Um, and, uh, yeah, and just working on trying to make that sort of a viable thing that I can do on a regular basis and, um, and not go broke in the process. So uh, I really, really thank you for, for all of your Stargate suggestions, and I'm and I'm definitely going to figure something out in the way of um, of uh, some kind of a some kind of a way of getting some some stuff out to you guys, and maybe um, maybe getting some crowdfunding going of some sort. But uh, so thank you. And until we geek again, I gotta go to bed. I'm tired. It's like it's past my bedtime. It's at least past nine o'clock. I know that. So cheerio.